Hi everyone, it's Mixed Media Mayhem time. It's that day of the week when a team of us take the same example and we all lift it and add our own interpretations to it. For me, you may have noticed that I try to be fairly literal in my Mixed Media Mayhem lifts because this is how I'm teaching myself mixed media. Uh, I look at, at what's in the original. I figure out what supplies I have, like this, um, this bunch of stamps that I've pulled out. And then I just start layering and kind of see where that takes me. But to some extent, I refer to the to the original maybe more than I do with regular scrapbooking pages and the reason for that is there's a difference sometimes it's for a sense of composition like here there are the vertical strips of of looks like paint there I'm going to use distress inks and there's there's a lot of stamping kind of around the photo cluster and then some stuff going on on the um, perimeter there on the edges. And it looks like there's a lot of inking around there. I absolutely love this. In fact, I picked this layout for us to lift. It's by Magda Bolinska and I found it on Pinterest, but it originally came from Flickr. And that's where I had to go to find the artist. Um, I absolutely love this page. I could just kind of sit here and look at it and find um, different interesting things about it um, all day long. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to create these um, yellow splotches that are in the left the lower left corner and the upper right corner, and then I'll go from there. I've got a photo of my grandson on spring break last week, and I've filtered it to really emphasize the blues and yellows and, and pinks. And I found a frame similar to the one used in the original, um, different size, but I, I think if I mount it kind of like that, it'll be in fitting with everything else. Um, I found a page, if you'll notice in the original, it looks like there is a sheet of a graphic design stripes or, or some kind of, of um, paper. So I'm going to mount that and then do the mixed media kind of over it. And I think that's what was done. I kind of debated whether to maybe use a medium on here to um, maybe flatten it. But I think by the time I get the layers over it, I, I think I'll, I'll have it. You can kind of see I've been <laughs> testing colors of, of ink there. So like I said, let's, let's do, and I'm just gonna use some packaging technique. I'm gonna spray. I've got a couple packages here. I'm gonna spray this Distress Oxide spray in Wild Honey. And I guess I didn't tell you where I got that paper. I got that paper from this tablet of Color Wash by Pink Paisley that goes back to 2013. And I store that tablet with my kind of vintage-y, vintage beachy sort of um, collections. I'm just gonna do that and I'll see if it It may be a little strong, 
but I think I can I think I'll I you know, with all the stamping and everything I don't think that's going to be a problem and Okay, and I'm using Vicki Vicky Booten's Mixed Media Foundations paper. I had this washi tape there as a guide to keep my page on camera because I do have a problem with that, um, especially when I get all into um, mixed media. Um, let me kind of go get a little more up in here and kind of come down the sides a bit like so. Okay. Now I'm going to also do a bit of it kind of this way, which will sort of be like one of the stripes there, although I do have a, an ink, uh, a distress ink, not oxide, that I'll be using. So I'm going to put this aside. I think I may be done with that. I'm going to dry this up and then I'm going to go back and do some splatters and then I'm going to do a little tiny bit of water to get some water reactivity going there to get a little bit of um, that watery look. And I'm spraying both the dry uh, packaging technique stuff and also the new spritzes that I did. Okay, now I'm gonna do the ink streaks in kind of the same order that they were done. And I'm, I'm using the small ink pads. This is um, Emerald or Mermaid Lagoon, rather. And I'm gonna kind of just scratch it across there and cross that border where the paper changes to the, the background there. Okay, and that's hit some of the water from up there, which is fine. And this is mustard seed, which I'm gonna kinda add to the, the um, what, what, what color is that? Wild honey that's already there. And I kind of like how that's going across where the, the uh, chevron zigzags kind of show through. And then my biggest, most prominent strip is gonna be this um, bright pink color. It's, uh, it's picked raspberry and I really like how that looks and it's, I think it's gonna look good next to the photograph. So again, I wanna do a little spritz of water to get some movement in those colors and to get some water reactivity going on here. And you can see how there's a coating on this white paper and there isn't one on this. So you can see how the 
reactivity is different on the two papers. And I probably, if I had it to do over again, and I suppose I do, but not gonna, uh, I would coat all of this with gesso. I would seal the paper down onto the um, foundations paper with some gesso. And that would both act as a medium to kind of glue it down and it would give it a coating so that the you get some uniformity in the um, in that that look. But I think by the time we add all the stamping, I don't think it's going to matter. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the perimeter stamping. I'm going to do a very light, um, let's see, I have a, color of this, and I may do it off the page onto my mat here, and then kind of rub it on with my fingers just getting a little bit of tint in the the white area and it's it's kind of mixing with the yellow in some spots and this is just uh, I'm tr trying to at, at the end of all of this I want this not to look like it was a white piece of paper so that's kind of kind of where I'm headed here. And this will blend with the other colors we've put down. And what I'm using here is um, Turquoise uh, Dina Wakely uh, Media Gloss Spray. So it's going to have an interesting um, sheen, I guess, next to some of the other uh, mediums that I'm going to be using. Okay, that's enough of that. I'm going to blot it up. Well, I'll just take the, the last swipe of it there. Okay, so that doesn't look like much uh, to start with, but I absolutely love this stamp set. It is um, number medley designed by Rachel Gregg for darkroom doors. It's a big rubber stamp. I got it from Redefine Creative. It has several different patterns on it. It's got this line of numbers, small numbers, larger numbers with some crossed out, kind of right up in here, the number five there, a row of, of numbers in two different fonts, some mathematical um, work being done there. And then this, I think, is what I'm gonna use to kind of go along the edges like that. So what I'm gonna stamp it with is, or ink it with, is this vintage photo distress oxide. I kinda do some there and let me do a little bit up at the top. Do some there too. And then I'm going to do 
where did that come from? That came from there. And I need to put that back up in its place so that I know where to find it. Um, I also have a stamp from Visible Images or Visible Image that has some lines and a circle. I haven't opened this one before, but I thought maybe this liney one would be interesting. I'm gonna put it on here and then kinda lay it down randomly. Even kind of over there. And let's do something there. Now there's also in here a circle that I thought might be good. I'm going to do the circle in gray. Whoops. And the gray that I'm using is hickory smoke. And I'm going to use it kind of right there where there in the original, there's a, a circular frame. Now I'm going to do this in vintage photo also and kind of do it off the page in a couple places. Let's see. There we go. Just to add a little interest there. And I've got some small little um, interlocking diamonds. And I'm gonna use tumbled glass to add those just in a few random places, kind of in conjunction with other stamps. Okay, so there's that bit of interest. Now, I'm going to place all of that off to the side and deal with it later. I have another visible image stamp that has a lot of um, it's, it's one large stamp. And so I'm going to ink it up in the gray color and then use different parts of it in different places. And right here, you can kind of see what the images are. There's a hand and there's some circles and there's some, there's some math going on in there. I guess I'm attracted to stamps that have mathematical equations. So I'm gonna go here and here, there, and it's just got kind of random lines and shapes all around, and I forget where I have stamped and where I haven't, so I'm just going to kind of lay it down randomly and let it sort of take on its own life. And I think that's all I'm gonna use that for. Now, I have some of my most used stamps, 
which are this scripty one and this music one. Um, sheet music. I'm going to do the sheet music in vintage photo kind of bring it around again kind of filling in some of the gaps not uh any particular design being uh, hoped for there. And I'm gonna ink this up and kind of do the same thing, sort of like that and there and sort of there. It's so light and um, subtle that it really kind of looks uh, like the background, like, like a background. So speaking of that, I'm going to actually kind of do some streaking with this tumbled glass around this paper, just kind of messing it up. Okay, now I'm gonna take my black ink pad and I'm gonna go back and do some of these numbers, some of the things that are in black here. One of the things I noticed was this bit up here. I've got this really kind of dot. This is a um, Tim Holtz mixed media stamp collection and I use it a lot. Um, I'm just gonna take that off because I'm probably gonna use all of those stamps. I'm going to find my big block. Where's my big block? It's here. And I'm going to ink it up. With this, I'm going to kind of do it like so. And it's, it's not done. Uh, perfect. It's not stamped perfectly. It's it's kind of just some outliney stuff there. I'll get a little bit more of an image, and that's okay for up there because I'm now gonna do these numbers. kind of right there, and that's not good that it didn't really take there because that was a part that was gonna show. So let me go back to that big stamp. I've got these two, this set of numbers right here that has some numbers crossed off, and it's vertical in orientation. So I'm going to ink that up kind of separately from the rest and maybe just smash it down and see what happens. Well, not much. Not much happened at all. Let's put it right there. Okay. That is appropriately messy enough. I'm going to do some black ink on this uh, column of um, like this accounting kind of stuff. Kind of put that there. Um, okay. And, and where it changes, I lose some stuff there. 
So let me go back and pull this guy. Well, actually, let me take this guy. Now this still has some ink on it and I'm gonna maybe, okay, and, and it's upside down and that's cool. Let's do that and maybe there and and that was enough to clean the ink off let me do this one this has some ink splatters i keep doing that and i'm going to use the ink splatters i want to do it this way i think And I'm going to do another batch, maybe in a different shape, like up here. Okay. And the reason I inked that up in the first place was to get something kind of right there. Like that. Um... I think I'm going to use these plus signs just as a, an accent around, maybe there, maybe something right there. Something there. I think I'll just leave that. I'm going to take this little circle and kind of move it around in the composition. Okay, and let me do something off the page there. And I may put a flare or something around so No particular reason I'm doing this other than to give, um, you know, to kind of add to that composition that's, that the, um, and because it just kind of seemed like a cool idea at the time. Okay, so that's appropriately messy. Now, I'm going to put that aside, put that aside, put that aside, and it'll be fun putting all that back together tonight. I have this set of stamps that is absolutely magical, and I'm going to go now on top of, now that I've added that black, that's all the black that I want on there, I'm going to ink these up with some of my Distress Ink colors that I used around in there. This one is a, a row of eyes. And it might be cool right there. Um, let me put that back. I've got this little set of, I don't know what anybody else calls them, but I call them choo choops. So we have a few little tube tubes and I'll ink those in blue as well. This part of the page is probably going to stay like this until I ink around the edges. I don't want to fill out a whole lot more pattern there, but where there's pattern here, I'll maybe add a little more. Okay, and then some pink, some picked raspberry, and I'm going to do picked raspberry choop choops over the, um, and there's probably a, a law against doing what I just did. Let's see, I'm going to put those 
that way and see they don't even really show and that's kind of what I wanted although I would like them up there I'll make them kind of slanted up there okay now yellow and I kind of want to stamp around a fair amount of yellow and I'm going to do, this is mustard seed. I'm gonna ink this up and see what it does in areas like this, for example. Ooh, I like that. Okay, that kind of over the blue like that sort of makes it greenish. And this it goes over the black. It's very subtle, but I think it's very nice and adds a, a good uh, a good look to the page. Okay, now I'm done with that. I'm gonna take the um, vintage photo and I'm gonna ink around the edges, just sort of like this. Kind of getting some on top of the colors, but basically taking away all the white on the edges. And I think I may need a re-inker for my vintage photo because I have used it a lot. And here I'll go maybe a little bit lighter because this is the area that we're kind of leaving a little bit open. And then I'll start darkening it up down around here and around this way just kind of buffing it a little bit across there Okay, and now to get a little bit more intense color on the very edges, I'm going to do this. It's not going to make much difference, but I like it when there's a sharp, really dark you know, kind of inked edge when I'm doing the inking. Okay, so now it's time, I suppose, that we add the photo. So let's do that. I have a few embellishments here, but I wanna get my photo on there first. And I like that the frame has colors in it that are compatible with what I've chosen. To be honest, I would use it even if it didn't uh, because of the shape. And I'd probably alter it somehow and change it around. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it right there. And then I will kind of put that in there like so. I'm going to use this um, gray bramble fox frame for the piece that was up here that was kind of bridging across the, uh, from the paper to the
from the this background paper or to the uh, mixed media paper. And that's good. It's kind of got some interest there. I have this title that says, Love This Life. And I thought I might put it here. Let me look. I'm going to scoot over it. That is acceptable to me. I normally like to bridge where a f where the uh, one of these pieces has a, f a font change from one font to another. I'm sure you realize that's what that meant. What I meant by that. Um, I like to line up the font change with the change in paper. And this, that, I can do that here, like this, but it's going to mean, it means that this L on love kind of overlaps this frame. And the frame is on foam, so this isn't going to stay down. I'm going to, what I'm going to do Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the foam off the back of here so that this goes down flat. Let me get that there. And I may need some help from some tweezers to peel that up. Sorry that you have to watch this. It goes down to, uh, it's down to Okay, I have rinsed this out and got it flowing before the video started and Okay, I'm gonna put some more on here, back up on that L, and then some of the lower parts. Okay, now let's try this again. There we go. And I'll press that down really well. And because Mixed Media Mayhem landed on my day for my... Um, Dottie About Flare design team page, I'm going to use a wide variety of flare here. And I'm gonna call this my Dottie About Flare design page. And because Adam and I are both in the Mixed Media Mayhem group, and he's my boss at Dottie About Flair. I thought that abstract flare with those colors were perfect for the bumblebee. My grandson's name is Barrett, we call him B. So most of you know that that's why I use bumblebees on all of his pages. I'm going to 
I, I just thought that would be a perfect match. I'm gonna use flare from about five different releases here on this page. And I'm using a lot of Bramble Fox because, you know, I love it. <laughs> I'm gonna use this guy right here. And let's look at the flare I have. I have some more little Bramble Fox circles. I have the beach houses, which are kind of cute. And I thought maybe could go right there. And I may use a circle up in that area as well. You see there's that circle there. So I'm going to add a dimensional circle, kind of inter interlocking with it. And I have a star that's left over from a previous layout. I had it pulled out to use for another layout, and I didn't use it. I have this pink arrow flare, which I thought I'd put over here. It's exactly that picked raspberry color. So I'm going to put it there. And kind of work it in with this group of circles. That works out. I have another bumblebee in this flare, and I thought I might work it in up here with these circles. And I could have the bumblebee looking down. Okay. And let me put one of these black circles up here with those. Okay. Because he's at the beach, I have this um, seashell flare that actually has uh, some of that yellow color kind of in the center. And I thought maybe, let's see, do I want to put it there or maybe even here? How about right there? And I have a mermaid. It's in blue, but it's not quite the right color of blue. And I have this scribbly one. I kind of like maybe the scribbly one right there, kind of stacked on top of the frame. Gonna do that. And then I'm gonna put a little black circle right there, or do I want it right here? I think I want it here. Okay. I think I'll put this one back in the bin. And I'm gonna call this done. It seems like I might need something right there. Let me look and see if I have another flare 
that might work there. I don't want, I don't think I have anything in the blues. I have a, I don't necessarily need another B. Um, that wouldn't be awful, but it's not exactly what I'm looking for. This says adventure, explore more, work less. And that's kind of perfect. It's, um, it suits a spring break page. And I think I'm going to add this little circle. Where did my scissors go? I've got this circle that can go around that, and then I may add the other part of it up there. That, that's a die cut that I did for another page and didn't use. So I always keep things on my desk if I think I, you know, they're, if they're generic enough to be used for something else. Okay, so that kind of sets, sets up the flare just perfectly. And maybe I can do this right there or something like this right here. Let's put the glue on it and see where it wants to go. Okay, I'm not liking that. If I do it here and here, that seems to work. Let me get a little bit up on the upper part of it. Okay. That's fine. Now, I thought I would add some sequins, and I have no idea which ones I want to use. I like the bright yellows in Late Summer Thoughts, but I'm tending more to go with, um, I kind of like the, coppery, woodsy look of the All-American ones, and there's a, a navy blue in there as well. So, I'm gonna do some glue to hold this down, and I'm gonna run the glue up and down the seam there, because this paper without the coating just really behaves differently underneath all the wetness. So, having done that, I'm gonna do a few sequins over in here. just randomly placed um, with no particular relationship to the design. But 
This one has a little bit too much glue sneaking through. I would like it to look like these just kind of fell on the page. And if I work it right, it will. This is a kind of a double glop of glue. And so I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna do a double set of sequins there. Again, looking like they fell. And I wanna do some sequins over in here. Okay, and we're almost done. I love these navy blue sequins. I put that one on upside down, and but these, these are my favorite. I think there was a full mix that had mostly those uh, woodsy looking sequins and I missed out on it. So I may petition to get another release of those. Or I know Adam used a whole bunch of them on um, at least one of his pages, maybe several. And I'll see if he has any left. I might steal them when I go visit him in June. Shh, don't tell him. Okay, I thought I had another glue dot up here, but I don't see it. So that's it. I think we're done. And I'm happy with the page. I don't know how close I got to the original, but I think I picked up on the major, the major vibes going on there. I really like that this zigzag shows kind of over to the left of the big streaks of paint. And I really like this title I think it's um, a good stand-in for the title there, and the circle that's under it kind of works for that circular frame. And then this little cluster here is kind of nice. I have something up here, whereas it's, it's pretty open on these edges, um, but I... I'm okay with uh, with this. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.